Hi, this is Mr. Mack. This is a video, a preliminary video, on why calculus. Basically, in the math courses you've had up to now, you've learned an awful lot of things. We've been dancing around two questions that uh, uh, mankind really comes to pretty quickly. One of them is what is the rate of change of a curve? Now, in Algebra 1, you learned about rate of change, and you learned that a, the rate of change of a straight, straight line, we call that a slope, is uh, easy to compute. It's just if you take two points on the line, uh, one y value minus the other y value divided by that same first x value, uh, same first point's x value divided by the second point's x value, and we get change in y over change of x, which is the rate of change. And in a line, it's easy to use that ratio because uh, with a line, the rate of change is constant. But when the rate of change isn't constant, when you're dealing with a curve, you might ask yourself, what is the rate of change of a point on the curve? Let's see if we can get this point to show up. There we go. See, if we have this point right here, the question is, what is the rate of change at that instant? Because if you can, if you look at it for a minute, you'll see that as the, um, as you change or as you choose different points along that curve, the rate of change is different for each one of them. Well, what we ordinarily do is we take a look at this and we say, well, if we were to take a tangent line to the curve at that point and find its slope then we would call that slope the rate of change of the curve at that instant. Now, so we define the slope of the tangent, it's over here someplace, the slope of the tangent to be um, the rate of change of the curve at that particular point. Now, the problem is you only have one point, and so one point doesn't determine a line. Um, and this question leads us to a study of what is called differential calculus. The second question that we ask ourselves is, what is the area of a bounded region when at least one of the boundaries is a curve? Now, if you look at this, this curve right here, uh, um, this curve right here, um, if we were to use, say, the x-axis and these two vertical lines and ask ourselves, what is the area inside this region here? Notice that uh, this particular region is bounded at least on one side by a curve. And so to find the, uh, um, the value of this area, a lot of times what we do is we start and say, well, let's start and create rectangles that are attached to this curve, and we go across, and uh, then if we add the areas of these rectangles, we would get an approximation from the area. Now, it's also possible, instead of using rectangles that stick out over the edge, to use rectangles that are inside. And if we did that and added those areas up, we would underestimate the curve. And as you can see, if we were to uh, increase the number of rectangles, the outside rectangles would kind of come down towards the value of the um, area under the curve, and the blue rectangles, which if there, if we increase the uh, the number of rectangles, would the value would come up towards the value of the area, and we could squeeze in on the value of the area. Now, in both cases, uh, it requires that we accept the value of something that doesn't really exist. Now, we call that a limit. Now, let's take a look at the, um, um, let's take a look at the function f of x is equal to x cubed minus 8 over x minus 2. Now, if we were to um, ask the calculator, uh, start with this. Let's, if we were to ask the, uh, if we were to ask ourselves, what is f of two? 
What is the value at 2? Well, that would be 2 cubed minus 8 over 2 minus 2. Now, 2 cubed is 8, so 8 minus 8 is 0, and 2 minus 2 is also 0. So we get 0 over 0. Now, uh, hopefully, at this particular point, you've learned that 0 over 0 is not undefined. 0 over 0 is what we refer to mathematically as indeterminate. Now, undefined is a uh, word that we use when uh, the expression we have cannot be represented by any real number. But indeterminate is the word we use when the expression we have could be represented by, or it could represent many different numbers. And so more information is needed. Well, now, if we were to take, uh, let me just get rid of these and do these again. Uh, as you'll notice, this is the second time I'm going through this because halfway through I was interrupted and then I found that I didn't have any sound on the rest of the video. So let's go to the calculator and we'll start out with um, y1 is x cubed minus 8 over x minus 2. Second window. Uh, and I'm going to go to the table setup and I'm going to uh, actually change the independent to ask. And so when I go to the table, um, if I put the x values in, then I can, it'll tell me what the y values are. Now, we're interested in f of 2. So let's kind of sneak up on 2. Let's try 1.9. 1.99. 1 1.999. And 1.9999. Now, if you look at this, uh, for example, it looks like uh, 1.99. Uh, 9999 is 11.999, but it's not really. It is 11.9994001. Uh, if you highlight a number on your calculator in the table and then look down at the bottom, it'll show you more than you're getting up actually on the screen. But now it looks as if the values are kind of approaching a particular value. Now, I'm not going to name it yet, but... Um, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a picture of this screen right here and put it down here. This is pretty much what you saw before that I erased. And then I'm going to go back and uh, delete these values. And now let's, uh, let's sneak up on 2 from the right side. 2.1, 2.01. Two point zero 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 one, and notice again we seem to be sneaking up on values. Now uh, look at the numbers over here: twelve point six one, twelve point zero six zero one, twelve point zero zero six zero zero one, twelve point zero 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 six zero 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 one. So you could probably guess what two point what f of two point zero 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 one would be. There'd be a Another zero before the six, another zero before the one. But anyway, uh, let's take a picture of this one as well. Put it down there next to it. Now the claim is going to be that it doesn't really matter which side we're approaching uh, two from. We're squeezing in on the same number from both sides. And what we do is we define the value of that number, the number that we're squeezing in on from both sides, to be the limit. See, in other words, we're going to say the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x is equal to, and now I'm going to say the number. You can see, I hope at least, that we're squeezing in on 12. Now, sometimes a picture helps. So let's draw a picture of this graph. Now, f of x is equal to um, x cubed minus 8 over x minus 2. Uh, we could actually graph that, and I have that set up here on the, the calculator, and it looks something like this. Now, um, if you look at that closely, right there about the middle of the screen, I seem to be missing a dot. And, and it's not because my calculator's broken. Uh, let's press trace here and see what we get. Um, if, we have, if we start with 0, or 
uh, negative 1, for example, uh, we get uh, y is 3. We can go to the right and notice for each y value, x value, there's a y value. But when we get over here to this particular point that's missing, x is 2, notice the blinker goes away and there's no y value. Uh, the y value is just gone. And then it shows back up. But now, if you look at the graph, it looks like a parabola. And in fact, it is a parabola. It turns out that it is the parabola, except for that point. g of x is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 4. Now, every value of f of x and g of x are equal, except when x is 2. Let's go back to y equals. And uh, what I have now is I'm going to activate x squared plus 2x plus 4. And let's go back and look at the table. Second graph gives us a table. Notice all the y values are the same. Let's go put some 1.9, 1.99. We have enough room for one more, 1.999. And notice even the y, the, the, all of these values are the same, even on the parts that aren't showing up on the screen. Okay. But now, if we were to graph these two graphs together, let's go back here to this one, and uh, let's make this one very solid. Okay, notice there's the, the solid one, and then when the second one went through, it kind of filled that in, because g of 2 is 12. Look at this. 2 squared is 4. 2 times 2 is 4. So we have 4 plus 4 plus 4, which is 12. So g of 2 is just 12. Now, um, what you have here then is a, uh, is a graph of a parabola, well, g of x, uh, f of x anyway, uh, with what we call a removable discontinuity or a hole. And the fact that it is removable means that we can actually assign a value to that particular point even when it doesn't really exist. Now, it requires that we evaluate limits for us to answer the two questions that we have in the start of calculus. So we want to do the rate of change of a curve, that's differential calculus. Eventually, you're going to learn to find the derivative. And then we want to uh, find the area under a, a area of a region bounded by at least one curve region. And that turns out to be integral calculus. And as we develop these tools, uh, taking the differential, the, the derivative, and taking the integral, we'll find all kinds of other neat things that we can do with these tools. And that basically is the course that is set before us this year. So you should not be surprised that the first workout you're going to get is a workout on learning how to evaluate limits. And that concludes our preliminary video.